Right. Okay. Um, I just want to read from Colossians chapter 1. And uh, this is verse 15, right? Colossians chapter 1, verse 15. Uh, maybe we'll just read from verse, verse 12. It says, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of his love, okay. in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him, all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. And 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 then it goes on to explain um, a little more about the fact uh, that he's all powerful, that you know in the, in him all things consist and so on. Um, but verse 15 talks about the fact that he is the image of the invisible God, firstborn over all creation. So who, uh, who is this he that is referred to here? It is none other than the Lord Jesus, right? He's talking about the son that we've been convey conveyed into the kingdom of the son in whom we have redemption and so on that he is the image of the invisible god so um a very important lesson for us here is that uh, the lord jesus he is the image of the invisible god in the sense well we know that he is deity that he is god that anytime we have a doubt about you know is this the hand of God, or can God do this? We need to look at Jesus, right? Because he is the image of the invisible God. And by him, all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible. Visible and invisible. So the visible realm and the invisible realm. So since he is deity, since he is God, and he is a very exact representation of of the Godhead. So anytime we have or we need clarity about God, about the hand of God, about the works of God, and about the attribute or characteristics of God, we can always confidently turn to Jesus, right? We can look to Jesus and see and learn and be established and say, okay, this is what Jesus did this is what Jesus would do. This is his nature. So I'm established in it, you know, and I'm convinced. Right. So just wanted to share that and uh, let's pray. Right. Father, we thank you this morning that we can come to you. Uh, we can draw near to you in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for, Lord, that everything um, was created everything that we see and everything that, not, that we do not see, the invisible and the visible are created Lord, by you and through you and for you, O oh God. And anytime we have, we need clarity, we can look to you, Lord, we can read about your works, your earthly ministry, and Lord, and uh, be discerning in your hand at work in our lives, O oh God. So we can know that this is of you and we can know what is not of you, God. We thank you. Uh, we thank you for continuing to speak to us and we pray that you will continue to speak to us today as well. We commit ourselves into your mighty hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, um, we'll continue. We, uh, we were looking at, um, um, you know, the God's guarantee Right, we were looking at that word guarantee, and we were seeing, okay, um, you know, how can we say for sure that God prospers His people? Okay, before we, uh, I just want to check. Um, like, I see very few in-person students online. So, are there multiple? Are you guys uh, sitting together, like Anand, Vijay? Um, Or are there only so many? Uh, can you just let me know, Anand, Vijay? Or uh, I, I, I see only three of you logged in. 
Um, are they at least? Pastor, uh, yes, Pastor. Uh, okay. We are, we are project, projected on screen, Pastor. Oh, okay, okay. Fine, fine, fine. Okay. Wow. Right. Thank you. Thanks, man. Okay, so yeah, let's uh, let's uh, pick up from where we uh, stopped last class. So last class we were looking at uh, you know guarantee, and the, and uh, we were just ex exploring uh, the fact that God has guaranteed or God gives his guarantee. Okay, just like how a manufacturer of a particular product would give a guarantee, and what is the guarantee that uh, you know about the product or about the service, saying that um, you know that it, it is basically they they are saying that. If there's anything wrong, we would replace the whole thing, and uh, and you know they are giving their word, right? They are giving their word, their promise. Okay. So similarly, can we say for sure that God's word or God's promise is to prosper His people? Okay. Can we know for sure? And uh, how can we how can we know for sure? Right? Maybe it's God's will to for some people to be poor. For some people not to, you know, have wealth at all, right? Uh, uh, could it be possible that God might want some people to remain, you know, in poverty? Could it be possible that uh, that God would want to do that? Well, uh, we need to be sure right, about these things. So we started by looking at the very nature of God, and right? uh, what is the nature of God? What is God's characteristic? What is God's attribute? So we see that as Scripture reveals His nature, right, the very nature of God is to bless His people. Right? God's very nature is to bless and not to bring about harm. His nature is to bless. So let's look at a few uh, scriptures. Now we look at uh, Genesis chapter 1. We go to Genesis 1 and uh, verse uh, 23, 24, right? Um, and we see that, you know, repeatedly we see this, and God blessed them. This is verse 22. Okay, God blessed them. Um, and it says, be fruitful, multiply, fill the waters, um, and fill the water uh, in the seas and let, birds multiply so the morning and the evening and morning of the fifth day then god said uh, you know let the earth bring forth and so on okay so we see that god blessed you know even he created and creation he blessed genesis 1 22 okay then uh, let's look at a few other scriptures james 1 and verse um, 17 right um okay James chapter 1 and verse 17 says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Okay. And the verse before that, it says, You know, do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Because the context is talking about sin, talking about the path of, uh, you know, temptation and how it leads to entrapment and ensnarement and and, and being ens ensnared and uh, enticed and you know sin bringing forth death and so on, right? So do not be deceived about that. Do not be deceived about the fact that you know this the, this path of temptation leads to death. Okay, don't be deceived about that. But it also means this that. With God, you know, He is not the one who's leading you down that path. Okay, so it's, it says here that every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. Okay, so from the Father, what comes from far, from the Father, the Father of lights? These are good gifts. These are perfect gifts, and it's not like the path of temptation, right? So uh, He gives good things. He gives perfect things. And uh, it comes from the Father of Lights. And one more attribute is that, uh, um, well, there's no shadow of turning. There's no variation or shadow of turning, which means that it's not like, okay, he's he's going to bless you today, and uh, and he's not going to bless you, you know, another day. No? He is consistent in his nature and character, and his heart is to 
less okay now uh, and and so on so we see even in the titles uh, especially about the lord jesus that he is the prince of peace okay uh, that is uh, we, we go to isaiah 9 and verse 6 we see that he is the prince of peace and uh, this is the prophecy right about jesus um, and uh, one of the prophecies that was made and uh, the old testament prophecies and this is what it says for unto us a child is born unto us a son is given and the government will be upon his shoulder and his name will be called wonderful counselor mighty god everlasting father prince of peace so why is his name called something because he reveals that attribute or he reveals that character right so wonderful counselor mighty god because he is everlasting father because he is prince of peace because he is the prince of shalom the word used there is shalom okay so um shalom it's a wholesome word we know it means goodwill prosperity health um wholesomeness everything that is good peace also right? so he is the prince of shalom and another uh, scripture in this in the same book which is isaiah 48 and verse 17 okay isaiah 48 talks about okay how does he give shalom okay how does this shalom or in in what capacity in what um, quantity does it come okay what is the quality of it okay um, verse 17 thus says the lord your redeemer the holy one of israel i am the lord your god who teaches you to profit who leads you by the way you should go oh that you had heeded my commandments then your peace would have been like a river and your righteousness like the waves of the sea okay so saying uh, you know i'm the lord who teaches you what does he teach he, i i teach you to profit i teach you to you know do more and uh, more than uh, everything i teach you to maybe you know if, if it's work if it's profession if it's business uh, the Lord is saying that I'm the one who teaches you and profit is something that you have after all your other costs are met. You know, if there is rent and uh, salaries to be paid, bills to be paid, you know, uh, everything is everything is done and the profit is something that you have. So uh, after, you know, if you look at it strictly in a financial uh, sense, Right. So that's Isaiah 48 and 17. And, uh, um, and then uh, it, is, it says that, oh, that you had heeded or you had listened to me and my instruction. Oh, that you had heeded my commandments. Okay. So what is the Lord saying there? He's saying that, oh, if you had, if you had listened, then something would have happened. What is it? That, um, um, that, if you had oh that you had heeded my come, then your peace or your shalom would have been like a river. Okay, there's something about a river. You know, the river flows. Uh, it it seems to be never ending, right? It seems to be you know just on just continues to flow. It seems to be never ending. So the redeemer, the holy one of Israel, is saying, if you had heeded my commandments then your shalom would have been like the river, never ending, ever flowing, and your righteousness like the waves of the sea. So we, we you know, we both, we see in, in this particular verse, right, that your shalom will be like this. So uh, we, we see right through that he is the prince of shalom, and shalom includes prosperity and peace and uh, health and in other words health and wealth right and success and uh, flourishing so it is the nature of god to bless okay it is the very character of god to bless people and uh, well what if he blesses some and he does not bless some others and we know that God is not a biased or a partial God. His heart is to bless. 
Okay, now that gives rise to other questions. Then why is it that some are not blessed? That why is it you know some are the way they are? And they are struggling and and so on, right? So we will we will get to that. Okay, but uh, when we when we talk about the principles, okay, and the how to of um, you know uh, what what is the principle that I need to that I need to follow, right? Um, what are some truths that about in God's word that I need to be following and and simple things like working, right? Simple things like being diligent and putting in good effort. All these things matter. Okay, so we'll come to that. Okay, so the nature of God is to bless. So we need to understand that. We need to be sure of that because that is what we see in Scripture. Okay, um, and uh, we see that yes, there is this condition of listening to him because he says in uh, you know isaiah 48 and verse 17 he says i'm the one who teaches you okay so which means that uh, the lord is teaching one to receive blessing teaching one to prosper and uh, it you know implicit within that verse is the fact that uh, one needs to be taught in order to be taught one needs to listen Right. In order to be taught something, one needs to follow through and then receive the benefit of that teaching. Right. So there's no point in if I if I'm a if I'm a hearer, if I'm a forgetful hearer and not a doer. Right. The Lord is teaching you, He's saying, okay, um, you do this, three things, and uh, you will see the success. That it it is that I have for you, or the blessing that I intend for you to walk in, right? So there's no point in saying, okay, I I didn't do it, but still I want to see it. Well, God's grace might cover that for a season, right? But the fact is that God is saying, this is what I want you to walk in, and then I'm teaching you. So which means that I need to be taught. I need to yield and listen and obey, follow through with that teaching. Okay, so um, so God is not partial; He is impartial, and uh, He uh, that is and the the very fact that uh, John chapter three verse sixteen that God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. To whom did He give His only begotten Son? To whom is this this plan of salvation? It's for the whole world. And why is this? whole thing accessible or how did he make it accessible salvation it is by grace through faith it's not based on qualifications it's not based on education qualification or it's not based on you know status or position or uh, any other thing or, or because i speak a particular language and i speak it well no it is by faith which means that well it is equal Right. He's not partial. He's an impartial God. So he is. He's just made it plain and open and accessible. This entrance into his kingdom, which is the greatest treasure of all. Right? The salvation, which is the greatest gift of all. He's made it accessible to all through faith, through grace, uh, by grace, through faith. Right. So he's not biased. Psalm 145, verse 9. The Lord is good to all, and his tender mercies are over all his works. Okay. It doesn't say he's good to some. He's, he's, the Lord is good to all. And it says that all your works shall praise you, O Lord, and your saints shall bless you. And in another place it says he's the one who sends rain on the just and on the unjust. Okay, so which means that he is good to all. He is good to all. And he's gracious, full of compassion, slow to anger, great in mercy. The Lord is good to all. So he's not biased. So uh, when we look at the nature of God, we can be convinced, yes, God's guarantee. God guarantees to bless his people. Okay. The second thing that we see is the promises of God, where God specifically says that I will bless okay so these are what we can call as the general promises of God okay uh, which means that um, 
we need to know the different difference between a specific word right which is a rhema word which is a highlighted holy spirit uh, inspired word for someone okay now there was a rhema word for philip we read in the book of acts what was that word it was only for philip right there were others who were there in samaria when this great revival happening okay, peter and john were there they had come to pray over the people and they received the holy spirit and uh, you know they were they started praying in tongues and all that so we see that happening so they were blessed okay um but this rhema word came only for philip and what was that word philip you go to this place called gaza and which is desert and there you know, further instruction would follow of course you know it was just that just for first part of that just go and he went he left right it was a rhema word was it for everyone no it was a specific instruction the same way you know some specific words of instruction for peter right he was in the house of tana and uh, there was a specific word go to cornelius's house there are two people who are coming who are waiting at the gate just don't ask any questions just follow them go right so we see that yes there are specific instructions or specific promises even right so we need to know the difference between what is the rema which is the quickened word of god and the logos which is the you know which is the general instruction and uh, the general discourse of god's word okay which is which is the which is there in the, in the bible so the logos we see there are promises and principles which are there for everybody which are applicable for everybody right? and it's not just for me by name but it's for everybody there uh, the, and and the and the surprising and the and the best part is this that in the logos right which is the general word of god for everybody in the logos there are enough and more general promises which promise the blessing okay enough and more for example let's look at psalm chapter 1 now now these are of course there will be conditions right there are uh, it is conditional it doesn't mean that you live however you want you harm yourself you harm others and you will receive blessing no you know there are certain uh, conditions which are inbuilt into it right some are explicitly stated some may not be but it's there right? because of who he is right he leads us in paths of righteousness for his name's sake his name is righteous he is holy he is righteous for his name's sake so uh, when it comes to these things also right so some of these conditions are in but okay let's look at psalm 1 okay blessed is the man okay blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly nor stands in the paths of sinners nor sits in the seat of the scornful but his delight is in the law of the lord and in his law he meditates day and night okay so what is the condition of that person blessed he is blessed okay and he shall be in his in his state of blessing in his condition which is blessing the end result which he has received he shall be like this what is it verse 3 he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season whose leaf also shall not wither and whatever he does shall prosper okay so blessed is such a person who's not doing certain things and this is the end result of it this is the consequence that he will be like trees planted so that's a picture of health that's a picture of um, you know blessing and is flourishing thriving right the tree is thriving it says that the tree planted by rivers of water brings forth its fruit in its season and the leaves are not withering and uh, and further to that he's saying whatever he does what he puts his hands to shall prosper okay we can look at psalm 23 we know that uh, psalm the lord is my shepherd and i shall not you know it says i should not want which means i shall not lack any good thing right so that itself 
talking about the fact that okay, there are, there is a general promise to whom the Lord is the shepherd. Like this is the testimony of the psalmist, and the and then the and the and the, and, the, and, and the, this is what he has promised. As we as we go through, we see, and the testimony is that surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever, because the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. And yes, if you look at one after the other, it talks about restoration, it talks about you know leading, it talks about uh, uh, rest and uh, nourishment, uh, it talks about protection from evil, and it's, it, it talks about, it, it, it also talks about, you know, position and elevation and uh, and favor right it says you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies you anoint my head with oil my cup runs over surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life so that's a picture of again favor and blessing and and flourishing and who is who is the one who does that it's the lord who is the shepherd so it also, you know, what is the what is the thing that is inbuilt in it? It's that we follow the shepherd. Okay, the shepherd leads and the sheep follow, or the shepherd instructs and the sheep carry out the instruction. Okay, that is inbuilt in it. But as the Lord is a shepherd, I will not be in lack. So the promise of God and the testimony of the one who walks in the promise is that surely goodness and mercy follow me all the days of my life and i will dwell in the house of the lord forever right so we see that these general promises of god and the ways of god which is to bless each and every person okay let's look at one more and then we'll you know you can read the rest uh, psalm 84 verse 11 okay for the lord is a sun and shield the lord will give grace and glory no good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. Okay. So what does no good thing mean? And whatever is good, whatever is good for this person, okay, no good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. Why? Because the Lord is the sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. Okay, so we see these promises of God, we see these general promises of God, not just the specific rhema for a, a person, right, or a, a, or a group of people. Right? It is the general promise of God itself uh, is uh, one that of blessing. So you walk in it, and uh, this is the end result. Okay. Um, Joshua chapter 1, of course, it's a specific word for Joshua, but we also know it's a principle for everyone else, okay? Um, that you meditate on the word, that you care, be careful to observe all that is in it, and you walk in it, right? Declare, this book of the law shall not leave you, you know, let it not depart from your mouth, meaning you make it part of your speaking, you make it part of your doing, you make it part of your thinking, meditating, and you will have, you walk in it, and you will have good success. So we see that God's heart is to bless, and God guarantees to bless. The general promises of God point towards that. Okay, the next one is the blessing of Abraham. Okay, the blessing of Abraham. So um, uh, if we go to Galatians 3 and verse 13, okay, um, Galatians chapter 3 and uh, verse 13 says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. And um, he has redeemed us for this reason. Why? That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit. That the blessing of Abraham might come upon us, who are the Gentiles, and that we might receive the blessing of uh, sorry, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit. Okay, so um, 
so it, when it comes to this that we have been redeemed we have been redeemed from the curse of the law now the curse of the law is the, the is the consequence of not obeying is the consequence of not following the law and uh, actually Deuteronomy 28 the second part of it lists out some terrible terrible things as consequences of not being or not walking according to his law okay but the fact is this in Christ we have been redeemed from those consequences because he took upon himself the wrath of God or the punishment for not uh, following those consequences not not following the law not obeying the law not keeping the law right so he took upon himself the Lord Jesus took upon himself took upon it took upon himself sorry so we have been we have been redeemed from the curse not only are we redeemed from the curse but the blessing of Abraham we've been redeemed we've been brought to a place where our lives have been opened up so that the blessing of Abraham might flow into us that might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus and that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith okay um, and then we all we all we see several other places also you know in Ephesians chapter 1 um, uh, we see that uh, Ephesians 1 and verse 3 blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ Okay, every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So one might argue and say, okay, these are spiritual blessings, not material blessings or financial blessings. Okay, fine. Uh, you know, even if we say that, okay, this is what it is, but the but the spiritual blessing affects us here and now. The a spiritual blessing uh, is so inter intertwined that it affects is manifest in the natural in the physical okay um, so we've been redeemed from the curse of the law that we that the blessings of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus so when we look at um, okay what are these blessings that um, uh, that Ab uh, that we can read so this is what uh, the Lord speaks to Abraham and specifically he tells Abraham he says you know Genesis 12 and now the Lord had said to Abraham get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you I will make you a great nation I will bless you and make your name great you shall be a blessing I will bless those who bless you and I'll curse those who curse you and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed so that's the first pronouncement that Abraham receives okay. you look at the next chapter 13 and verse 2 says that Abraham was very rich in livestock in silver and in gold now why would you know why would there be a mention of this right well the Bible doesn't hold back it just describes the position describes what the person walked in right so there's uh, it's it's not out of arrogance or pride or boastfulness we need to understand it's simply the blessing of the Lord right why one can be humble and walk in the blessing of the Lord. One can be humble and uh, and walk in great uh, great prosperity, right? And be a blessing and be a vessel or a conduit through whom the blessing can flow to other people. Okay, so um, so there's a shift, you know, in our thinking, a shift in our it challenges us to see that wait, actually we are blessed. And this blessing, you know, God intended for us to have. God intends for us to have. Right? Not that I might show off or use it, use blessings selfishly, but so, so that I could be a blessing in other people's lives. Okay, so the Lord is not withholding anything. He, he does. His heart is what that He does not want to withhold anything good from those who walk uprightly. Okay. So we see here Abraham was very rich in livestock in silver and in gold okay so um, let's look at one more scripture which is uh, just looking at uh, Abraham himself um, and we go to verse uh, 24 sorry chapter 24 and verse 1 um, and uh, Abraham was old 
well advanced in age, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. Yeah, the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. Verse 34 and 35 uh, of the same chapter, the testimony of um, this uh, servant, right? So he goes in search of a bride for his master's son, and then he also testifies, the Lord has blessed, he says, the Lord has blessed my master greatly. Okay? So this kind of blessing, which invo involves everything, you know, it involves, um, you know, he was victorious, he was a friend of God, um, because God says, you know, how can I, how can I not share this with Abraham, my friend? You know, I want to do this, I want to bring upon uh, judgment, Sodom and Gomorrah, but how can I not share this with Abraham? So he was a friend of God, and uh, you know, in all these ways, he was blessed. Right. So we see that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus. So, well, is there prosperity in the gospel? Yes. Right. But uh, you know, it has been tainted. It has been given a bad name. So when you know, when we when we hear. Uh, people saying okay name it and claim it or you know uh, you if if you are not prospering then something is wrong and, and all those things you know they've kind of tainted uh, and abused uh, and uh, you know misused this whole thing so so when people hear about prosperity they immediately think you know this oh i want to stay away from it but at the same time well they are in the world working for prosperity. Nobody goes to work and says that uh, I don't want a salary at the end of the month. And nobody says that. Right? They go to work to make a living, to pay the bills. They want a raise. Right? They want an increase. They're expecting that. And they're saying, I want a promotion. Uh, and uh, for various reasons, you know, I, I, so that it can, I can live a good life. I can take care of my needs. Everybody does that, but at the same time, they will say, you know, don't tell me about prosperity. Okay. Well, uh, we need to understand it rightly, and that's what we are trying to do, right? Through this, uh, through all this that we have been looking at and discussing, we need to understand it rightly that God's heart is to bless, but that blessing should not become an idol, right? Uh, and um, yeah, so we see here that you know the blessings of Abraham. When we look at the blessings of Abraham, the fact that all the Gentiles in Christ that who come to the spiritual union in Christ, meaning that they receive Christ as their Lord and Savior, and they uh, their identity changes, and uh, and they become, you know, um, what God in, intended for them to become in Christ Jesus, uh, justified and sanctified and triumphant, and victorious, and all that. In Christ, they receive, or we receive. The blessings of Abraham. God's desire is this: that the blessings of Abraham come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, okay, and that they might receive the promise of the Spirit, the work of the Holy Spirit, the promise of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, uh, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, right, to be part of their life. Why? That they might manifest the glory of God. That they might go, and that we might go, and uh, and disciple nations for Christ. Okay, that we might build His kingdom. Right. So we see this. Um, okay, we'll stop here. You know, any questions here? So we've looked at God's nature. We've looked at the promises, the general promises of God. We've also looked at the fact that in Christ. The blessings of Abraham, you know, God, God just fashioned it, or you know, this is how He modeled it. That the blessings of Abraham would come upon the Gentiles in Christ. So, any doubts or any anything that requires clarity, um, or anything that might that is still troubling, you know, uh, I know this is it, but what about this? Right? If you have this, what about this? Probably you can ask that. Um, any questions? Uh, you can put it on the chat also. Okay. Um, 
if not let's um, you know we'll we'll just move on okay so the next thing so the next thing we see you know why are we studying all this to understand that um, well god is actually for this and god really guarantees this okay um, what is this is guarantees the blessing right and we we saw that prosperity is not just money but it is success it is uh, uh, it, it could be, uh, it, it is, it involves money as well, but it's not just that. It is success and uh, increase in all areas of our lives. Okay. Okay. So uh, the next thing that we see is um, the, the new covenant that we are in. Okay. The covenant that we are in. It's a, it's a covenant of blessing. Okay. Uh, let's look at uh, Hebrews 8 and verse 6. Okay. Uh, we go to Hebrews 8 and verse 6. <clears throat> it says, Now he has obtained a more excellent ministry in as much as he is also a mediator of a better covenant, which was established on better promises. So he's talking about the covenant that we have entered into. Um, uh, okay, here's a question here. From Jack in. So, if a believer, if as a believer, I'm enjoying peace, health, and sound mind, yet only my needs are met, but I'm not financially doing great, can I call myself prosperous? Yes. Yeah. Because there is increase and there is, uh, you know, you are thriving and flourishing. And yes, you are prosperous. Okay. But um, the prosperity, you know, includes finances also, though it's not limited to only uh, finances, right? Um, so, uh, so, uh, so, what is it? What is it? You know, what can your outlook be? You know, what can your perspective be? Saying, okay, God, you know, it includes this as well. My finances are also part of uh, uh, me prospering. So, um, and this is your heart. So, what is it that I need to change? What is it that I need to shift? You know, is it my understanding of it? It is. Is it my? You know, what is it that I need to do? Okay. And the Lord will show. Okay, because uh, we're going to we're going to look at that. We're going to study. You know, what are these principles for prosperity, financial prosperity specifically? What are these principles that I can I can put in place, right, in my life? Um, so yeah, but your question, uh, I mean, your statement is correct, right? You are prosperous. We are prosperous, um, and it includes everything. And, this, and and finances also, right? Okay, so don't exclude that in the sense. <clears throat> include that as well and saying, okay, God, I, I'd like, uh, you know, everything else to be covered in all areas of my life, Lord. I want to, uh, I want to be prosperous because that's his desire. 3 John 2, you know, we can always go to that. And that's the prayer. Now, beloved, I pray that you prosper and be in health just as your soul prospers. Right. So prospering and being in health. So he makes the distinction just as your soul prospers. So soul is prospering, health is prospering, and everything else which comes in between, you know, relationships, everything materially, um, that you may prosper and be in health just as your soul prospers. It covers a wide range of areas. So, yeah, so we can go with that, right? Okay. Okay, so we were looking at uh, Hebrews 8 and verse 6, talking about the new covenant that um, that we have been brought into, and it's a covenant on of better promises. Um, and and that covenant is a covenant of blessing. Okay, um, he is the mediator. Who is the mediator? That Christ is the mediator of a better covenant, and it has been established on better promises. So when we go to 2 Corinthians and... Um, and, and you know, you've been learning this uh, in covenants and Second um, uh, Corinthians three and verse six. Okay, Second Corinthians three verse six. Um, he has made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant. Okay, who has made us sufficient? God has made us sufficient, uh, meaning that He is uh, that we are capable as ministers. Whatever is required us to be ministers of the new covenant he has made he makes us um not of the letter but of the spirit for the letter kills but the spirit gives life 
Okay, then he, uh, he goes on to talk about the um, the new covenant and talk uh, kind of contrasts and makes the distinction how this is so much more glorious. Okay, if the, if the ministry of death written and engraved on stones was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not steadily look at the face of Moses um, because of the glory of, uh, of his countenance, which glory was passing away. How will the ministry of the Spirit not be more glorious? For if the ministry of condemnation had glory, the ministry of righteousness exceeds much more in glory. Verse 10, for even what was made glorious had no glory in this respect because of the glory that excels. For if what is passing away was glorious, what remains is much more glorious. And he, and he goes on to say, because we have so much hope, we, we speak in this manner, we have boldness of speech and so on. So it's kind of <clears throat> making di that distinction and comparing between the two covenants. And uh, it's interesting to see that in the old covenant, you know, we, we, uh, we see several of those, right? In the old covenant, we see that it includes material, financial, blessings and prosperity okay and Deuteronomy 28 is you know, it's, it's it's very plain if you heed my words these are the blessings that would come okay and if you see that it, it talks about um, <clears throat> it talks about all areas of our life being blessed right talks about the land talks about um, the the work uh, talks about the food uh, everything you know everything is covered in that in verses 1 14 and 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 then the verses following talk about the consequences right the curse or the or the negative consequences of disobeying and uh, you know if if you read through each of those blessings we can say okay this is mine okay this is what god you Lord, you're blessing me with this. Now that's the old covenant. Okay. Now the new covenant is even better established of better promises. Okay. So the promises under the old covenant, you know, our perspective should be this that the God, you know, I'm in a new covenant, I'm in a new dispensation. I have the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit and I have access to your presence. Uh, I can come boldly. Uh, I can come courageously with confidence because of the shed blood of Christ. So I am in a better covenant. You know, we look at the old covenant and and we say, wow, but we are in a better covenant. So that old covenant and all the blessings that go with it, that are that that's really you know a, a minimum. Right? And so our perspective is that yes, that's a that is the old covenant and you have blessed us with that god and that is that still that that holds good because that is your you know that is your promise and that is what is our minimum now we are in a better covenant we are in this new covenant we are in a new dispensation it's better than the old so all that is promised in the old is covered and more right so that is what when we say it's a better it's, it doesn't mean that okay it's taken away right when it's when you say a better version of a software or a better version or an upgraded version it means that all these are there and more okay so when it's an upgraded version let's say a, a car or a bike you see that the uh, other features are still there but that's become a standard feature right you say that okay button start once upon a time it was a special speciality okay you just have oh, there's this kickstart and this better button start everybody was advertising that but now button start in a bike is a standard feature right it's not a specialty anymore it's a standard feature and what would be a specialty would be maybe a touch screen there like all the you know electronic vehicles seem to have a touch screen touch screen and a map there and so on right? now that will be a special feature so which means if an upgraded vehicle will not you know they won't say that okay it does not have a button start but it has a map you know? that standard feature will be there 
So also when it comes to you know Bible and uh, see that it's a better covenant and that covenant is a covenant of blessing. When we look at it, we see that yes, it covers the old and even more. Okay. Okay. So we'll stop here. So we've looked at um, you know God's guarantee to bless His people, and we looked at these four areas, and uh, we can be convinced and we can be sure that yes, God indeed guarantees to bless me. Right. Okay. We'll stop here. And then uh, we'll continue later. Thank you so much. God bless. Bye-bye.